gentleman from uh, South Dakota is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield myself uh, such time as I may consume. Gentleman from South Dakota is recognized. So it is impossible for any American to ignore the supply chain crunch, a supply chain crunch that seemingly impacts most every part of the American economy. And in that kind of an environment, I want to echo so much of what my friend from California said. I am indeed thrilled that the House is taking up this bill today. I'm grateful for his leadership. I'm grateful to be the lead Republican on this. And I'm grateful that this bill has been endorsed by 360 national, state, and local groups. This is much needed legislation. So how did we get here? With a massive influx of federal dollars into the economy and with COVID-19 changing how Americans purchase goods, for more than a year, United States ports have faced unprecedented volumes of cargo. Some estimates say that American demand for consumer electronics has gone up 40% uh, pre compared to pre-pandemic. And so the pressure on those ports has trickled down to every other part of the supply chain, leading to what Americans have seen, delays and product shortages. Now, uh, those constraints and the resulting extremely high shipping rates have made it more difficult not just for our country to receive imports, but also for us to ship our manufactured goods and agricultural goods out to the rest of the world. We have seen uh, unprecedented, I'll say it again, we have seen unprecedented rejection of American container loads by the large ocean carriers. They are in contravention of their contractual obligations, just refusing to haul that cargo, preferring instead to take the empty containers and get them back to Asia for a quick turn. Uh, that has caused serious problems, not just conceptual, real dollars, real cents. The American dairy industry has seen $1 billion worth of losses just in the first six months of this year. Now, Mr. Speaker, I'm a big fan of the free market, but the free market is many buyers and many sellers, and that is not in place today. Mr. Garamendi so rightfully talked about the consolidation we have seen in this industry, and indeed 30 years ago, the largest foreign flagged ocean carriers controlled about 15% of this traffic. Today, they control about 75%. That is not quite the free market that we used to have. And so H.R. 4996, the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2021, helps to address these supply chain bottlenecks. It helps to promote American competitiveness. And it holds accountable these foreign flagged ocean carriers, which I would note are increasingly dominated by Chinese state-backed firms. Now, let me be honest and let me be clear, this bill is no silver bullet. But shame on us if we fail to act. This supply chain crunch has laid bare the deficiencies in the marketplace, and we have an opportunity today to address many of those deficiencies. Now, probably the most common question, Mr. Speaker, my colleagues ask of me about this bill is why a congressman from the plains of South Dakota would be so interested in maritime law. I would just remind them of the world's great hunger for American beef, American beans, American corn, and American dairy. Indeed, 60% of South Dakota's soybeans are exported abroad. In that environment, this is not just a coastal issue, but it's an issue that impacts lives from the farm gate to every main street. And Indeed, I've been hearing from South Dakota businesses, from Strider Bikes in Rapid City to uh, Valley Queen, a uh, cheese processor in Millbank, and uh, they're telling me about how these issues are having a real impact on dollars and cents. Valley Queen has two million pounds of lactose. Now, this is a product that has already been sold to Asian markets, and it's just sitting there in their warehouses waiting for an opening at the ports. A recent container load of this lactose waited on the ports, Mr. Speaker, for 75 days. The lactose began to turn. And of course, that meant uh, a big deduction on the price that Valley Queen could get for that lactose, just a destruction 
of American value. This bill is about American competitiveness. Broadly speaking, the legislation provides the Federal Maritime Commission, that's the, that's the cop on the beat, the tools they need to make sure that this system runs more efficiently and runs more fairly. It makes sure that the interests of the foreign flagged ocean carriers are better aligned with the interests of American shippers. So the bill does a number of things, but I'll, I'll quickly just hit uh, on five. First off, under this bill, the FMC can set minimum standards for ocean shipping that uh, make sure that U.S. shippers are protected from actions of others which leave export cargoes stranded at U.S. ports. Number two, it protects U.S. shippers from retaliation if they file a complaint with the FMC. Number three, this bill prohibits the foreign flagged ocean carriers from unreasonably denying American export cargo on their, uh, on their vessels. Number four, it requires foreign ocean carriers to certify the accuracy of the detention and demerge fees. These are fines that they can hit shippers with. They have to certify that those fines are accurate. And number five, it would authorize the National Academy of Sciences to study how best to improve transparency in the supply chain. Now, I, I just don't know, Mr. Speaker, how any of my colleagues can allege that any of these things are not reasonable. These are very basic guardrails. These are very basic rules of the road that people who are using American ports should be obligated to follow. And so a choice for my colleagues is simple. A vote for H.R. 4996 is a vote to put U.S. shippers, manufacturers, farmers, truckers, retailers, and consumers first. That's where they should be. With that, Mr. Speaker, I would urge support of this legislation, and I would reserve the balance of my time.